During the last quarter century, Bob Barker's name has become synonymous with the venerable CBS game show, The Price is Right, that it might as well be called The Bob Barker Show. <laughs> he has earned 11 Emmys for his work on the program, and when combined with his 18 years of hosting Truth or Consequences, Mr. Barker has had more television appearances than any other broadcaster in history. The Price is Right will celebrate its 25th anniversary with a special in prime time on CBS on the 23rd. This whole right. show began in prime time with Bill Cullen many, many, many years ago. That's right. Bill did it for eight years, then it was off for eight years, then I started. But I remember as a boy in Milwaukee, it used to come on there at 8 o'clock at night, I That's believe, right. and it was a major prime time hit. What can we expect on the special on the 23rd? Uh, I think that you will thoroughly enjoy it, whether you watch The Price is Right regularly or not. The people who watch it, I think, will enjoy seeing the things. Some of them will remember everything, maybe. Some will remember part of it. But right. I'll clear back to day one. Yeah. But if you do not watch The Price Drive, if you're at the office or if you're working, these clips are hilarious. Our studio audience roared from the beginning of the special till the end. And I, I hope that, uh, I just hope that the viewers enjoy it as much as our audience. Will does. this program run what I will call the clip? The clip, <laughs> the most talked about incident in Price is Right history. A yeah. uh, young lady in the tube top mm -hmm. in the audience. Her name was called. She jumped to her feet, began jumping up and down, and out they came. <laughs> she came on down and they came on up. But no, you can't show that on that. Absolutely. Just as we did on the air. There's a, a banner across uh, her breast, of course. You don't as see if, it. As if we, uh, we would not know what they look you like. Know exactly, <laughs> you know exactly what happened, though. Exactly. And then and was, what, we have to have that. Yeah, wasn't there a contestant that you couldn't find one time? That's right. That's right. You listen. You, you know, I pay attention. You, you I do. Can, you yeah. do. You do. Uh, the, the name of a lady was called, but no woman got to her feet. But a man got up and went out the back door of the studio. And I realized that she was in the ladies' room. It was his wife. So I asked the page. I said, see what he does. The page shouted to me, he went into the ladies' room after her. So I said, well, let's wait. So I talked with the audience, and we waited for a minute, minute and a half, and in she came, got a standing ovation when she made her entrance. And, and she, she'd been to the ladies' room. What did she have to bid on? A water bed. <laughs> you love this show, don't you? Kate? I do. I, I yeah. really enjoy it. I know you do. And you know something? I love you, and so does the audience. Every well, time I you. see you at a CBS function, you're always so damn nice to me and everybody. You, you're a champion. Well, you I'm and like, I go back a long yes, way. Yes, we do. Yes, We've we grown do. gray together. Yes, we have, and thin <laughs> together. And your show, The Price is Right, you take on all comers. You don't play demographics. They don't have to be 18-year-old beauties. Jump. And I've seen some of these contestants. Yeah. I had a winner about three weeks ago. She won the big showcase at the end. She won the whole thing, 91 years old. Bless her, huh? A delightful lady. I, most shows, they go 18 to 49. Right. We, we don't. We have tall, short, fat, thin, old, young, all religions, all colors, all parts of the country. Our country is a melting pot. The price this is, is right. right is a melting pot. Damn straight. As a young boy, you were six years old and your father passed away. That's right. And you and your mom moved to the Rosebud Indian Reservation in the Dakotas where she was a school teacher. That's right. And what was life growing up on the reservation? For it was great people? from the second grade through the eighth grades, the years I was there. A little town of 200 people. Uh, we had a wonderful time, a great time. A river just down the hill from the, from the little town. We swam all summer long, big dam west of the town where we ice skated. And there was an Indian school, a government school, right. just east of the town. And uh, this was long before organized Little League or anything like that. But we had our mission midgets. It was Mission South Dakota. The mission uh -huh. midgets uh -huh. would go out and we'd play baseball, play basketball. We used to play basketball at the halftime of the... Uh, of the high school games. That was a big, and big was night And was course. there ever a language barrier considering you were on a reservation? Uh, not really. I had, uh, well, the, when I first arrived in Mission, I was in, in the second grade, mm -hmm. and I went out on the street, the little main street of the town, there were benches, and here was an Indian. I mean, Native he, American. A, a, yeah. in his blanket, his hair and braids and so on, and I went up and sat down by him and started talking, and he didn't say a word to me. So I went back into my uncle. I said, this fellow won't talk to me. He said, bah, uh, uh, Bill. He called me Bill then. He said, Bill, they, they can't, he can't. He, he, he speaks Indian. He doesn't speak English. English yeah. And, and uh, there were many Indians at that time who did not speak English. 
In high school, you met the girl who will become the girl of your dreams. You met Dorothy Joe. Huh? Dorothy Joe. And uh, you married her the day you got your wings as a naval aviator. That's right. And you took the train from wherever to St. Louis looking for a preacher. Huh? From, from Springfield up to St. Louis. And uh, we had made no arrangements beyond getting a license and having our blood test. So we went up there, got the yellow pages, found a minister, went out. We were married at his home. And when we came to Hollywood, believe it or not, he was at a church not far from our home. He, he was following us to be sure it worked out. And you, you, went, you went into the service, but you really never went to war. Uh, you were waiting for an assignment, as I read this afternoon, and then the war ended, and you That's never got right. to fly in combat, I, but I, you were ready to go. I, I had done my carrier landings, my qualification, and I was in the fighter pilot pool in Grosio, Michigan, awaiting assignment to a seagoing squadron, and the enemy learned that I was coming out. <laughs> <laughs> now, you thought it was the atom bomb, but uh, they, they, they heard the ace of the base was on the way. <laughs> And how long did you stay proficient in flying? Do you still or couldn't? No. I, uh, I fly TWA United. <laughs> <American>. <laughs> I was going to. I was going to instruct. I thought when I went, I went, I went back to finish college after I got out. Mm -hmm. And I was going to instruct. But I, I got a job in a radio station, and that was the beginning of the end. And whereabouts did, was that job? That was in Springfield, Missouri. And what was the job on the radio station? My, well, I, may I tell you how I got the sure job? Sure you can. I'd never been in a radio station. I knew nothing about radio, but I heard about the manager of a radio station who was crazy about airplanes. So I put on my naval officer's uniform and my wings of gold. <laughs> I'd do a little selling. Darn straight, kid. <laughs> and I went in and we talked about airplanes for about a half an hour, and I ended up writing local news and doing a sports cast. And then I was a staff announcer and I was a disc jockey, but I got a chance early on to do exactly what I do now. We called it audience participation then. That's right. And uh, I did shows from a little studio we had there. I did shows from theaters, drugstores, grocery markets. Remember man on the street shows? Sure. Just stood sure. on the street corner and you talked to whoever came by. And in Springfield, Missouri, sometimes it was pretty quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I watched this show on the beginning of radio that they, that they did on PBS, Empire of the Air. And a fellow said, at one point, we just stuck the mic out of the streets in, 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 in Manhattan and said, ladies and gentlemen, the sounds of New York and the crowd loved it. Huh? That's right. Yeah. I had what we call Barker's Balcony Broadcast, early Saturday mornings. And I used to hold the microphone out in the street, and people would be coming by, and I'd, I'd, I'd say, yeah, honk your horn if you're listening. And they'd do that, or they'd shout up, tell my <laughs> wife I'm going fishing, or whatever, you know. <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful? Oh, it was a wonderful time. And then one day, in about 1949 or 50, your, your beloved Dorothy Joe says to you, you know, Barker, we got to get out of here. we got to get you to Hollywood. <laughs> you, you, huh? She really, she well, pushed you a little bit, didn't she? she? She, actually, she heard the first audience participation show that I did. And she said, Barker, you do this better than you've ever done anything else. This is what you should do. She didn't say, you were great. She just said, you do this better than you ever did anything else. <laughs> so I said, I, I agreed with that. I enjoyed it. And so we set out to try to get me a national radio show. This was before, before television. Television. Course, okay. Yeah. More on the travels of Bob Barker and the special <laughs> coming up on the 23rd in prime time here on CBS. It's called The Price is Right, but it's really The Barker Show. We'll be right back <laughs> after these messages. <laughs> dream about you, so oh, I had to come down yeah. here. What were we doing in the dream? You were chasing me in the hayloft. <laughs> you bid $6,000 and the actual retail price is $8,602, a difference of $2,602. You win, Ali. What did you say? I said I want to kiss you. My dear, that can be a... Oh, wow! Yes, all right. She had... There's, there's no sense in fooling around with a little peck on the cheek here, darling. No. What'd you say? I said I don't even care if I win. Let's forget this. Man. Let's get out of here, darling. Do you still... So that's how all those stories about you get started. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That was the beginning of the end of my reputation right there. Greta on the toll-free Queens, New York. Hi, and welcome to the Bob Barker Show. The Bob Barker Show. Hi, Greta, you're on. Greta in Queens, New York. Hello. Uh, hi, Bob. Hi, Tom. Hi, Greta. Um, love the show, Tom. Thanks. Um, in your personal opinion, what is the success for TV shows today? What is the what? The success. What is the um, reason for the success of TV shows, game shows today? 
Baba Booey, I would turn Baba Booey, I would turn Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> Another treasured live television moment. Game shows, you know, are, are now the talk of television. Cables doing game shows. That's right. HBO's doing. Back. Yeah, yeah. Well, they never really left. My no. Friend. Well, all the years that I've been around, I've watched it. It's like the stock market, mm -hmm. up, down, up, down, and now we're we're coming back. On December the twenty first, nineteen fifty six. You got a phone call from Ralph Edwards. And, you, right. and, and, and when you came to Hollywood, you had the Bob Barker show. Well, when and I came to Hollywood, I had nothing. Well, I know. I didn't even have a, an agent, no contacts at all. But I got the Bob Barker show going. And Ralph had sold Truth or Consequences. And he was auditioning hosts in New York and out here in, in Hollywood. But he hadn't found just the one he wanted. And I'm told that you used to listen to Ralph. Oh, Edwards. I did. I on radio. And sure. that now and again things would happen on the Bob Barker show that happened on Truth or Consequences. Well, <laughs> that's true. That's you know, right. When I first is the... came to Hollywood, I used to go and to watch Ralph do his show. And I stole things from his warm up that I still use. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, you got a call from Bob Barker around Christmas of 1956. Uh, Ralph, Ralph turned on his car radio and he heard my Bob Barker show. And he liked my work and he gave me a call. I went in and after a series of auditions on December 21st at 5 minutes past 12 noon, he called me and told me I was to be the host of Truth or Consequences. Wow. And every December 21st since then, Ralph and I have met for lunch and had a little toast to our good for you long and enduring friendship. There's nothing wrong with that, sir. As a matter of fact, I can't tell you how many of our viewers and listeners emailed us via the computer network and asked uh, me to ask you about truth or consequences and whether you think it influenced some of the so-called reality programming we have on the air today, like America's Funniest Home Absolutely. Videos. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the shows uh, where they have the bloopers and, and, and they yeah. play tricks on people, all of that. We were doing that on Truth or Consequences years ago. And I might add, we were doing it better than they're doing it today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see some of those old tapes on, on television. Well, yeah. as a matter of fact... I'd look like my grandson yeah, doing the show. <laughs> many people have asked whether Truth or Consequences could... I mean, it, it was a very, very popular show in its time. That's could it come back? Could oh, it, it could. could it be it, reincarnated? And it will sooner or later. Yeah. It will. It will. And are, for example, you can buy the Honeymooners, and you sure. can buy Milton Berle's Texaco Star Theater, and you can buy the Tonight. Can you buy Truth or Consequences? I don't know. I don't know whether you can or not. Uh, Ralph talked with me a few years ago about the possibility of it being in reruns. Mm -hmm. But what you have just said, you know, that would make a good video, the best of Truth or Consequences. Sure. Some of those stunts were hilarious. Yes, they were. They were great. Well, tell the folks what to, I mean, you don't have to give me a, a stunt, but you'd, you'd ask the contestant a question, and then if he didn't I'd ask a question. Right. And if they didn't answer the question, they must pay the consequences. If you don't tell the truth. And, uh, right. If you don't tell the truth, you must pay the consequences. And uh, if they uh, answered the question, and it happened occasionally, I would discover it was a two-part question. I'd pull out the answer <laughs> and part. And one time, I had a smart aleck answer two questions, but it was a three-part question. <laughs> Because once I, had, I did my own warm-up and chose the contestants, and I'd get the right guy, he was going to pay the consequence. Yeah. And the consequence was you, they'd go out in the studio and make them do all manner of things. Oh, well, and we did things out on the street. We used to do the show at Sunset and Pine, the old studio there where there's now a savings and loan. And uh, we did great things out on the street, great things. I also got email from something that you did, y your only movie, Happy Gilmore. Did you have to say it was my only movie? Don't I have a future? Won't there be more, Tom? <laughs> yes, that was my movie career. With Adam Sandler. Happy Gilmore with Adam Sandler. And you're on the golf course, and you get into a huge fight. That's right. Time. We're on the golf course, and uh, he's supposed to be a professional, and I want to win this tournament. I had won it the year before with Nick Price as my partner, supposedly. And he was playing badly, and I began to uh, be more and more insulting in my remarks, and he just, he had a terrible temper in the picture. And he lost his temper. He hit me in the jaw. He said, all right, that'll take care of you, old man. And much to his dismay, I got up and beat the hell out of him. Beat the crap out of him. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got an awful lot of pe uh, email from people on, online uh, who, who respond to our programs here. And they asked whether you, uh, to me to ask you whether you enjoyed that uh, appearance. And you obviously did. Oh, I did. And whether or not there would be a sequel to it. And you would obviously like that, like that to happen as well. Well, as... Uh, no offer has poured in as yet, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm certainly hopeful. I, I came out here in 1950 
and it took me 46 years to, to get, get my first picture. I can't wait that long for the second picture. <laughs> <laughs> Not, maybe even 46 months is too long to wait. Have you ever wondered, you know, when you do something that you really think is good, why the phone doesn't just light up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you, where you do a great show and you've done so many. I remember when I was leaving NBC when we did the Tomorrow Show there, I really felt that we'd have to install a separate switchboard in the dirty Rockefeller Plaza <laughs> for all the job offers that were to come pouring in. You know how many people call? Zippo! <laughs> Here is Manny in New York City, New York. Hi. Hi, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, sir. Uh, I just had a quick comment from Mr. Snyder and a, and a question from Mr. Barker. Very good, sir. Uh, Mr. Snyder, I used to get in trouble all the time in the late 70s, staying up late watching your show. And uh, I hope you got a good education, and I hope you're terribly successful. Well, of course, I missed you terribly in the 80s, but uh, Mr. Barker, I, I actually met you when I was 14 years old in the Dominican Republic in 1977. Oh, my. I was down there doing the... Uh, Miss Universe pageant. Miss Universe pageant, yes. And I actually met you again in 1981 when you were in New York. And my question for you is, I, I, I absolutely miss you terribly. You brought a lot of class and a lot of uh, style to, to those. Well, now, I why was should... wondering if you, uh, if you missed doing those shows. Oh, you, oh, you missed me on the pageants? Right, absolutely. on Miss Universe oh, and Miss USA. Yes. And you did the Rose Parade for CBS for 21 Sometimes years. Sometimes I wake up in the night saying, Miss Argentina! <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I, I missed them. I had a lot of fun doing them. And uh, you know why I left them. Yes, I do. During I do. the fur flap. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I miss you terribly, though, because I remember as a child, uh, right before I met you when I was 14, uh, my family was, was so... My, my mom actually loves you, of course, through The Price is Right, and, and uh, whenever anyone asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up, I, I said, it's not what I want to be, it's who I want to be, and, and when I was a kid, I used to say, I want to be Bar Barker when I grow up. It sounds to me as if you come from a well-adjusted family. <laughs> 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 the pleasure talking to both of you gentlemen. I love you both. Thank you, Manny, for calling, and thanks Thank you, for Matt. watching our show. Uh, incidentally, and I don't want to get into the fur flap because we've done that before, but you know why it was originally done, why animal fur was worn by human beings, because they were freezing to death. Yes, yeah. yes. It was very, very cold. But times have changed. Yes, yes, they have. But, uh, I mean, back then, you know, right. people were right. freezing to death, and right. we didn't have nylon or rayon or all those other things. That's right. But they were freezing. Yeah. I, that's <laughs> and the other thing that As they, you say, we have done this before. Yes, we have. And the other thing that the viewers really want to know is, do you have any pets? Yes. I have a wonderful little cat named Dulce, mm -hmm. which means sweet, sweet in Spanish. Right. And I have a wonderful dog named Federico. And they're both bilingual. They bark and meow in Spanish as well yep. as English. We're, and we're and a do, happy they get, family. do they get a long dog and cat? Oh, they uh, the, she sleeps on me on the bed, and he sleeps right beside the bed, and the three of us are there. Yeah. But I've always thought the dogs and cats didn't get along, no? No, once they, once oh, they acclimate to they, each they, other. Sure, in they, fact, I hear you picked up an ear deal today. Well, I did, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> sure I beats models on the show, you know. <laughs> about our primetime special yeah. at, at, on one of the newscasts here uh, in town. Uh, and uh, as we're going along, here's this beautiful air deal out in the middle of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, leaping around. I don't think I'd ever been on the street before. So I had to stop the limo. I jump out of the car. I'm running through the traffic. I got the dog, got it in the limo. We go, to, we do the show. We call the owner. He's not there. I go up, and uh, he wasn't home, but his next-door neighbor knows the dog, has the dog for him when he comes home. So what it was a happy end. What a guy. Rescuer of lost puppies. <laughs> this is fabulous. <laughs> You know, I think the world of you. And Thank I, you. I, 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 I'm I, very I fond of you. I too. know. And I can't wait to see this show coming up August 23rd because I love clips. I absolutely adore them. Well, and I look forward to it. We have, uh, we play some games, pi pricing games. Oh, we do. And we have a showcase, as we do on our daytime show. But we have about, about 20 minutes of clips integrated throughout the show. Oh, wonderful. Not all in one, one part. Gotcha. And I think, I think you'll enjoy it. I will indeed. Hey, if you're on it, I'm going to love it. Thank, Thank you, Robert. You, My pleasure. Thank Bob Barker, Price is Right, special CBS, August 23rd. Next, Judith Miller and the strange goings-on, politics in the Middle East, after these messages. Ah, oh, you're...